Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the City of Murfreesboro Planning Commission meeting for February 2nd, 2022. We'll call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum tonight. Uh, our first item of business will be to approve the minutes of the January 19th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting. Everybody had a chance to see those ahead of time. If everybody is accepts those or uh, will be ready for a motion. Otherwise, if you have changes, please let us know. Make a motion we approve. A second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then we have our public hearings for tonight. Uh, two, two items there, both regarding the same property. Uh, the first item will be an annexation petition and plan of services for approximately 258.8 acres located along Northwest Broad Street. Horde family is the applicant. Ms. Rush, how are you this evening? Very good, thank you. Good evening, uh, Chair Jones, commissioners. The property owners, M.B. Murphy IV, as trustee of the Elizabeth G. Horde 2013 Irrevocable Trust B, and as personal representative of the estate of Thomas Hoard III and German Pittman Heyman III, as general partner of the Mary Hoard Haymore Children LP, collectively the Hoard family, have submitted petitions requesting their property to be annexed into the city of Murfreesboro. The subject property combined is a total of 258.81 acres. Uh, simultaneous with this application for annexation was a request to zone the property to CH, Commercial Highway, and GDO1, which is Gateway Design Overlay, one uh, district. There are no residential structures on, currently on the property, and the study area is located within the Murfreesboro Urban Growth Boundary and is contiguous to the city limits both along the northeast property line and the southwestern property line adjacent to Northwest Broad Street. The city um, staff has prepared a plan of services and annexation study. Uh, based upon that study, the city can provide services to the property upon effective annexation and with future development of the site. The plan of services has been provided in your packet and it provides detailed information regarding the city services. The Planning Commission will need to conduct a public hearing on the annexation and petition and plan of services, after which it will need to discuss the matter and then formulate a recommendation to the City Council. This first item is strictly for the annexation, and the next item on the agenda will be for the zoning, um, which is for the commercial use of itself. That concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Rush before we open the public hearing? <clears throat> All right, so this first item will be, as we discussed, for the annexation of the property that we're discussing, the 258.8 acres. Um, so annexation petition and plan of services. If we have anybody that would like to speak on either of those two items uh, tonight, any of uh, the annexation petition or the plan of services regarding the property, then you'll come forward to the uh, podium and state your name and address and make your comments to the Planning Commission. Uh, please don't make your comments to other <coughs> members of the audience, um, to the developers, to the family members. Uh, direct all your questions and comments directly to the Planning Commission. If you have questions, we'll make note of those questions and, and do our best to answer those at the end of the public hearing. Um, if you do come to the podium, you will have three minutes to give us your comments. Uh, so with that, we will open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak regarding the annexation petition and plan of services. Anybody at all? Yeah, come on up. Good evening, I'm Nancy Miller and my address is 2643 Chatham Court, Murfreesboro 37129. And that is in Riverbend subdivision. Um, I really do not have a major objection to the annexation. However, I do have an objection strongly to the scope of the uh, project that is going to be taking place 
uh, with an approved rezoning of the property. I've been a resident of Murfreesboro for many, many decades, and I object to it on the basis of um, the traffic flow in that area. This is a four lane which cannot even handle the traffic flow uh, on a, uh, when work lets out at four, 4.30, whatever. It's just not designed for that. Um, we also surround, we are, we are within one mile of the property. It's a beautiful property and I've known the Ford family for many years and respect them. Um, however, I've been here long enough to recognize that it presents a danger to our property, property values. I am also, I was also here when 840 was built and I know that we have the probability of possible structural <coughs> uh, issues when blasting and so forth take place. I've not seen any information on how sound uh, would be contained in a, an event of this large scope. Um, and I, I really do not understand uh, and would have questions about how we would handle services in that area. I don't think that's been clear enough uh, to the public at this point. Uh, so from that perspective, um, I do not uh, approve or, and I do object to the rezoning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Uh, I'm Doug Hutchins. I live at 2220 London Dairy Drive in uh, River Bend Subdivision. And uh, I'd just like to bring up uh, five things that cause concern. Uh, I really don't know at this time enough about this facility and the intent of this facility to say I object or approve because uh, there was a preliminary meeting. Uh, a week or so ago, and there was a lot of information that was not shared or was not ready to be shared in that meeting. A lot of questions were not answered or answered appropriately. But I would just say that we have concern uh, in Riverview and several of us uh, about noise abatement uh, because I understand not only a sports facility but also event facility including concerts and things of that nature. Uh, light abatement that they might have that might not interfere with River Bend. Uh, also traffic, and that's probably going to be mentioned by several people. Um, I understand that the uh, exit and entrance is going to be on Northwest Broad, and that's already an issue uh, at this time uh, without that. And then uh, the thing that concerns us the most, I think, at least myself and my wife, is the potential flooding of the West Fork of Stones River. We live right on the river. And uh, Marina and Sam Huddleston were gracious enough to come to our home this past week and look at some of the concerns that we have. Uh, because that river does flood, and it floods over on, right now, it floods over on to the Horde property. Uh, several acres floods out of that river onto the Horde property right now, right behind our house. So if anything is done to change that, we've got potential issues with flooding in our home, as well as some of our, quite a few of our neighbors. And then the other is any potential impact on property values. Um, I'm not, I, I don't really see any potential for that um, assisting and helping our property values without that close to us. Uh, so that's our, our five major concerns. Uh, we just hope that enough due diligence is done by that company uh, and also the, the planning folks here in our city and our, our city council that we understand the, the lasting impact that that facility might have uh, on our neighborhood and on our city. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate your concise list. Very nice. Who else would like to come up and speak? Hello. Hello. I'm Dr. Stephen Thomas. I live at 3511 Oakley Cove in Oakley subdivision. And uh, we think Oakley is a very lovely neighborhood, a great place to live. Uh, our house backs up directly to the river. And that area is undeveloped and, and was when we bought the house. And we realized that at some point it was likely that land would be developed in some fashion. But it's a completely different animal to have a neighborhood behind you across the river as opposed to an event facility where 
potentially tens of thousands of people are attending outdoor concerts. There's sporting events going until late in the night. Whistles are blowing continuously. There's bright lights. And uh, I agree with the previous commenters that we haven't heard enough of how the sound abatement will be done, how the, the light will be contained. Um, we certainly don't have definite answers as to how late things will be able to run. And just as a general comment on the, on the entire project in general, uh, I don't really see how it is a huge benefit to the city. It will add some minimum wage jobs that are there. It will draw in travel baseball teams, which will congest our roads and restaurants and all that sort of thing at night. And I don't know that's going to add a whole lot to our economy like say a factory or something like that would. I mean, to me, it seems more of a nuisance as far as traffic and, and all those kind of issues. And if it does go forward, we would certainly ask that the council would do what they can to uh, you know, contain the sound and light pollution. That's certainly going to be a huge issue because we are literally 200 yards away from where the, there's a field drawn on the thing right now. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Appreciate you coming out. Who else is here to speak tonight? Nobody? Okay. We will close the public hearing on the annexation employment services. Have a few <coughs> questions to try to address. Who wants to start on that? Ms. Rush? Um, I do appreciate the neighbors coming out to speak this evening and providing a list of comments. Uh, the first one was in regards to traffic. Um, the actual annexation of the property in its current state would not generate any traffic. So with future development of the site, uh, whether it be the sports facility or any future development, uh, residential, commercial, industrial, would generate traffic and that would be analyzed when the site plan review process would go through. Uh, so it's not uh, analyzed at this time because there is not a proposal for the annexation. Uh, that would be with the development in the zone. In terms of noise abatement and light abatement, uh, as we indicated to the community on, uh, on the occasion at the neighborhood outreach meeting, the city's noise abatement um, would be handled under the noise ordinance, which is in our municipal code. Um, that's uh, pr oversight is provided by the chief of police as well as the chief building official. And there's very specific things and thresholds that are contained within that ordinance uh, so that if you're below it, you're okay, and if you're over it, you're not okay. I think if there's any further questions about that ordinance, I would defer to the city attorney because it's not <laughs> in the zoning ordinance, so I'm, I don't have that much expertise in it. In terms of light, uh, that is in the zoning ordinance. There's a, very, there's a long list of um, specifics that have to be complied with um, in terms of light and spillover. So the light cannot spill over off to the property. That's the basis of, of what's in our ordinance. Um, what our understanding is is that it would be uh, legacy sports would be using LED lighting, athletic lighting. Uh, this is something that the city has implemented at several athletic fields. Um, so we are familiar with, uh, with that. We've recently put some in at Siegel, um, or at the tennis courts, as well as some of the other facilities. Uh, we have not, to my understanding and the communication I've received from parks and recreation staff, uh, that we have not received any light complaints since the new lights have gone in. So with the LED lighting, there's a lot more opportunity to direct that lighting onto the fields themselves. Um, in terms of flooding potential, I will defer to the city's or to the um, applicant, uh, their engineer, SCC Matt Taylor's here, and he can speak to that um, specifically. Um, there was another comment about jobs, and uh, so those are all things that would are already taken into consideration by the city. Um, those were all the questions that I had noted. Was there any others? And, and one thing that, that we may want to keep in mind is, is the more project specific questions and use specific questions might, we might probably get into more details on those during the, uh, the zoning item. 
Gray, I think we need to try to concentrate at this point on the specific items that would uh, be affected by the annexation of the property uh, and whether or not we think that the city uh, can and should annex this property uh, at the request of the property owner um, and can the city provide the services that would be required if it was annexed and we certainly have and know that we need to address all of the questions that have been brought forward uh, and you will have a chance again to come forward and restate your questions uh, at the next public hearing as well. Uh, so I don't want anybody to think we're ignoring uh, those questions at all. We will address those in more detail, I believe, at the, the zoning uh, public hearing. What other questions y'all have, Sorry. Mr. Lalant? Nope, not a question, but to make sure comments. I was Regarding just going to say, for the, for, for, yeah, as far as the annexation goes, we have property that is within the city limits that's further away from this, further out, so it shouldn't be any issue with the plan of services. So I'm going to move for approval on the annexation of plan of services. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So our second public hearing will be regarding the zoning of this property. It's a zoning application for approximately 258.8 acres mm -hmm. located along Northwest Broad Street to be zoned commercial highway and GDO1 simultaneous with annexation. SEC Inc. on behalf of Legacy Sports Tennessee is the applicant. Ms. Rush. Thank you. Um, the, this is the companion zoning application for uh, the project that was just um, heard on the agenda for the annexation. Uh, so it is for 258 acres located along Northwest Broad Street. The requested zoning district is commercial highway with a gateway design overlay one um, combining district. The CH zoning district with the gateway GDO one overlay um, allows many of the base uses that are in the chart one of the zoning ordinance under the commercial highway district. However, with the gateway, um, it does restrict several of those uses and prohibits them from um, being able to develop in that zoning district. And that is to ensure that there is quality development um, that occurs within that overlay. In addition with the GDO one overlay district, it also has a much higher standard of, of design and review and it goes through um, several iterations of a design review by the Planning Commission before it can be approved. And then that's another way, another tool that the staff can use to make sure that it is a quality um, and attractive project that would get built. Um, they're requesting development of these uh, zoning districts to allow the development of a sports facility, which includes outdoor fields, including baseball, soccer, um, pickleball, softball and indoor facilities that would be used for basketball, gymnastics, and cheer. Uh, there's also an indoor electronic gaming um, facility where I guess a lot of the kids, I know my, my teenage boys love this stuff, where they get together and they play games against people from other places and now it's become a more competitive uh, real sport. Um, as well as restaurants, retail, and hospitality uses. And those would be located primarily along Northwest Broad Street. So a lot of the development is along nor Northwest Broad, and whereas the, the fields and the open air fields are um, towards the northeast portion of the property. The adjacent zoning that's uh, shown on this map here uh, indicates that the property is primarily surrounded by uh, unincorporated land in Rutherford County that's zoned RM to the north northwest, west, and south. Uh, the property directly across the street is a, an industrial zone property in the county, which has a rock quarry. Um, <coughs> so they have a rock crushing facility there. And um, then the property to the east and northeast are within the city limits, and those are zoned RS-15, single family residential. Um, it is the Oakley uh, subdivision as well as the Riverbend subdivision. Uh, the future land use map of the Murphy Spurrell Comprehensive 2035 plan has identified this as a mixed use category 
um, intensive mixed use, which allows urban character and a mixture of uses for entertainment, restaurants, high density residential, retail, and uh, those types of uses was what was foreseen to occur on this property. Uh, so the zoning that they're asking for, CH with the GDO1, is consistent with that future land use map designation. Staff is recommending approval of this zoning district um, and supports the request for the following reasons. The CH and GDO1 uh, zoning is consistent with the future land use map recommended land use character. The GDO1 zoning is intended to ensure high quality design and site planning for the property to help regulate the uses that can be established. And with that being said, uh, staff is recommending that the planning, conduct, uh, planning commission conduct a public hearing on this zoning request in which you will need to discuss the matter and then formulate a recommendation to the city council. And I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Matt Taylor of SEC representing the applicant is here as well. Um, I don't know if you have a few words. Uh, there's no presentation from Matt Taylor, but he's available to answer any questions as well. Okay. All right. Questions for Ms. Rush or Mr. Taylor before we open the public hearing? Okay. Could, could I, I, I tell you one thing that might be helpful. Sure. I, I just think just so before we get into public hearing is to, for, um, you made a mention of, or made mention of the idea that there would be some, um, you know, our, site plan um, you know we'd approve the site plan and there was be many other steps C can you give us kind of just a quick synopsis mainly for everybody to understand what this process is going to look like you know so we just went through the annexation we've got that knocked out now we're going to talk about the zoning we're going to have but beyond that because we already had a couple of comments we already know this is going to be a question that's out there which is kind of they haven't seen enough they don't see all the details right yet about the lighting and the sound and the placement of everything can you just explain kind of when that will come in the process so everybody kind of understands that correct so after the property is zoned uh, the applicants can come forward to request development and that's done through our site plan review application process um, with the site plan review we look at not just the building design but also the overall site design which includes traffic, lighting, and things that would be um, inclusive of, of what they're proposing. Um, it's very likely that it would come in in multiple applications. So for um, the building facility, maybe one application, and um, the hotel or um, restaurant would be in a different application. So with each application, we'd be reviewing for impacts. Um, they have been informed that we are requiring a traffic impact analysis. Uh, they are gathering their data to begin that analysis. I'm not sure if they've started it yet, but um, so they are gathering what those parameters or what the bookends have to be in terms of intersections, baseline, um, impacted segments of roads of what has to be included into that study, as well as how much trip generation this would, um, would generate, not just for the facility, but for um, any of the ancillary uses as well. <coughs> Um, so in terms of GDO, it does require multiple review. So it needs to come in for an initial conceptual review and a master plan review. That would be brought to the Planning Commission. Um, and so your recommendations and comments would be taken back and addressed. And then they would have to come back again for a second review for review and approval of that plan. Once the if they get an approval, once the approval is done, it then goes through a, a permit review process to make sure that every requirement, every comment that's imposed on it by outside agencies, inside staff departments, that those are all adhered to before they can get any permits to pull. So I hope that answers. And I, I think one of the main things that you mentioned is, is just the general fact that there would be a master plan that would be part of the initial steps that we would review and because with a master plan we would see you know are you talking about uh, <clears throat> two lots on Northwest Broad Street and each of them would have a restaurant on each one uh, or are you talking about ten lots on Northwest Broad Street and you'd have a restaurant and a retail store and a you, you know gas station, dry cleaners, whatever you're going to have up and down through there. Because all of those different types of uses require different types of, you know, 
they're going to generate different traffic flows and so you can't really look at the whole traffic pattern and know the number and the amount of traffic you're going to have until you know what each of those pieces and parts are um, so it, it is a it, it, it turns into you know, a, a much longer process than just a one thing that we might do tonight or we might not do tonight um, or uh, you know, but the, each of those steps uh, might require a different traffic study, might require a different lighting plan, um, and, and so there are just a lot of steps along the way. I think that's what you're trying to get across, Mr. Lalance, correct? Exactly. And the other thing that I might just mention, too, and I'm not sure you may have said it, and I just didn't really catch it, but, the, you know, we kind of go over pretty fast GDO1, and we all kind of know what that means. I mean, I still kind of don't know the difference between 1, 2, and 3, but I know what GDO is. Mm -hmm. But just for the benefit of everybody in the audience, I mean, that's the gateway overlay, which is means, you know, everything has to be brought up to that same standard that you see out on the Gateway Medical Center. And so as far as, you know, for example, when we built the fire department, the fire station on Medical Center Parkway, you know, we, I think, spent some sort of, well, I'll just say some substantial amount of extra money making sure it had the right pitch lines in the roof and the right amount of brick and the right amount of landscape and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that they're asking for As in compared this development. To a, right. a fire station that would be built just even down the road, but not inside the GDA. That's right. So um, anyway, it's kind of a, a whole nother layer of standards that have to be built up to and have to be monitored and maintained. So. Anyway, just thought I'd make sure I brought that up. Okay, okay. thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments or clarifications before we open the public hearing? <coughs> okay, so we will open the public hearing now for the zoning application. Uh, it is for the same property that we just discussed the annexation on, uh, but you are welcome to come back to the podium again and discuss any questions, comments, concerns. Um, even if they are repeating some of your <coughs> prior questions, comments, and concerns, uh, because I think a lot of them are more appropriate regarding the zoning of the property. So <coughs> we will open the public hearing and invite anyone to come forward that would like to speak regarding the zoning of the property. Anyone? Do y'all want to come back? Good morning, or good evening, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Chairman Jones, members of the Planning Commission, I'm Brick Murphy, and I live currently at 1011 Glasgow, but I recently bought a house um, in, um, in Riverbend, uh, right on the river um, at 2227 Shannon Drive. And I'm here as a future homeowner uh, in that neighborhood um, I've had an opportunity to work uh, on this project a little bit. Um, have gotten to know um, Chad Martin with Legacy, um, and I'm really excited about it. I bought a house in the neighborhood knowing this was coming. Um, I feel very comfortable about it. I think it's going to be a great thing for the city, and I feel uh, yeah, that we've got good checks in place. The city staff, Matt Taylor, the Planning Commission is going to make sure that it's done in a way that interfaces well with the neighborhood. And I think it's going to be a really good thing for the community. So I'm very excited about it, and I would just ask you vote in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Thanks for coming out tonight. Who else would like to speak? Stephen Thomas, Thomas again. Uh, I won't go through the whole spiel again. Uh, I'd like to reiterate my previous mm -hmm. concerns. I did have one question, though, that was sort of alluded to when she was uh, going over the answers to the, mm -hmm. the questions that were brought up. And she said that if there were violations of the no noise ordinance, um, that it was addressed by the city and, uh, you know, the police and, and that sort of thing. And, and I understand that. And my question is, if there's repeated violations, let's say that we don't have appropriate sound suppression or whatever, and it sounds like you're at a soccer game every night at 10 o'clock in my house, what's going to happen then? It's too late after the entire facility, all the fields, everything's been built. So 
is there some way to estimate this, to plan for these sort of things? I'm sure there's something, but, um, and the other question is, what if they are in violation after everything's done? What's to be done about it after that? So, um, as I said, I realize this affects a relatively small number of people, but we, uh, the few of us that are here, are directly on the thing across the river, so. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. And we will close the public hearing. And so we have just a couple more questions. Ms. Rush, do you want to try to, or you need someone that can talk to us about uh, how to handle violations to things such as the noise or ordinance. Sorry, I have to turn this one over to our attorney, Mr. David Ives. Mr. Ives, what can you well, tell us about this? It's difficult to say how, what kind of response there would be until you actually face a specific situation. But <coughs> if, if there is a continuing uh, violation, there, Remedies can include fines. They can include orders to stop. Uh, they can. Uh, it, there's a variety of things that can be can be done, and um, feel, you know, it is a uh, the noise ordinance is uh, uh, handled by our police department. They have some noise indicator. Nor they they can they can measure noise. I can't. <laughs> I, I know what I enjoy and I know what I don't like, but they do have instruments that can measure the noise at a place uh, and I'm, that would be done and there'd be, I, I believe there'd be appropriate corrective action required by the city. Matt Taylor from SEC, if I can address just the noise. Um, I've also got Mr. Chad Miller, the CEO of Legacy Sports with me, as well as Mr. Mike Kuntz, the architect, and um, the Reebling uh, combo back here as well. Um, as far as noise, we have tried to orient the largest noise generator, which is gonna be your arena and the outdoor um, auditorium or um, area back toward Broad Street. So we've tried to locate those away from <coughs> the neighbors and back toward you know, a very large noise generator already in just the Northwest Broad. And so, you know, where you would normally think of commercial highway along your major highways, we've tried to pull those intensive uses back there. The things along the river um, that are gonna be close to uh, the residents are the quieter facilities such as the fields themselves. So we are not trying to throw concerts back there, you know, pump out loud music all the time back there. There may be some incidental music if you've been to a, you know, a soccer game or baseball, you know, sometimes there's some things in between the innings, um, but they are traditionally very quiet venues in my experience. And I have traveled across the Southeast, not the country, um, in those, and they are very quiet venues uh, for these. So. Um, we, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I think something else for Dr. Uh, Thomas is, you know, from his house to our nearest field would be at least 600 feet, so about two football fields. There's trees, there's some trees on his side. We would have to leave at least 50 to 60 feet of those trees on our side, untouched. That's um, both a city as well as a T-deck. Um, enforcement there. The city has their water quality protection area and then TDEC has their stream bank protection areas. Uh, TDEC is just a temporary buffer during construction but it essentially keeps you from cutting those trees down whereas the city's <coughs> is a permanent stream buffer. And so those trees will help mitigate and break up that noise as much as anything. Separation is the greatest um, buffer and I think the river, uh, the river is always going to be there. We always talk about per perpetuity and guaranteeing buffers, the river's always gonna be there. So I think that is a very great um, <coughs> asset between these two uses here. So Matt, can you address the, um, the flooding piece of the Horde property and how that would be addressed as part of your process with the city? 
Yes, sir. So there is uh, a fairly substantial amount of uh, floodplain on our property. There's a fairly substantial amount of floodplain in Oak Lee subdivision as well as in River Bend. Um, and so we would, just like they did, we would respect and comply with the city's <coughs> floodplain ordinance. It's part of the zoning ordinance uh, that is um, governed by and approved by FEMA. Uh, it's also ratified by this board. And so it essentially says, you know, what we can or cannot fill in out there. And so there's a flood way, which we cannot fill, the flood plain we can fill. And so we would comply with the exact same regulations that o Oakley and River Bend did uh, to mitigate and um, prevent those impacts on the neighbors. Uh, one good thing I think that the neighbors should um, understand is that we are downstream of them. So their water is actually gonna flow on to us uh, not the other way around. So I think that uh, there's something to be said for that. Um, so there is, are extensive, uh, extensive measures and uh, ordinances and regulations to prevent that additional flooding. Uh, and I will say that myself, as uh, well as uh, Russell Reebling, went out and walked, uh, it was four or five uh, sites, uh, la I think it was last Wednesday, uh, neighbors had expressed some concern at the neighborhood meeting, so we come out and met them. A couple of them weren't home, but we did come walk their backyard to see, you know, just get a taste for what they were looking at, what they were concerned with. So hopefully um, those conversations, those on-site visits um, help to alleviate some of those concerns. We'll be happy to do it with anybody else that was here tonight. Uh, I don't think we got into Mr. Thomas's backyard. We did see his house. We were in the neighbor's yard, but I think he was probably working at the time. And Thank you. Mr. Taylor, isn't it, uh, and when you do any type of, uh, you know, regrading or any, anything that you're going to do to, to, you know, be working on the flooding issues, et cetera, isn't it true you can't do anything that is going to make it worse? You can't push <coughs> any of your water and let it end up on their side and flood more than it used to to fix your side, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, and so that is uh, one thing that I did not mention is we'll have to also comply with the city's stormwater ordinance, which means we basically have to capture all the rainfall that falls on our site, hold them in ponds or uh, some sort of BMP or um, stormwater feature, release that slowly, um, that, that acts in a couple of things. It either, it cleans the water, it also prevents the stream mm -hmm. from flowing full for as long and as often. And then it also uh, meets what we call pre versus post regulations. So essentially, if there's three buckets of water getting dumped on your property today, we can only dump three buckets of water uh, in the future. And so there, it, it serves several functions there. And that goes through not only myself reviewing it, it also gets reviewed at the city level. Uh, TDEC will review a, a certain amount of those, but it's more geared toward the uh, erosion control side. So we've got several layers of review that go with that. I would say on the floodplain, we would also submit a loam, what's called a LOMAR F after the work is completed. And then we would submit that to FEMA after the city approves it and physically move the floodplain line uh, with where it ends up on our grading plan. And so we'd go through another layer of checks there as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. <clears throat> what other comments or questions? I'll make one more comment just as I'm thinking through what this property looks like and I'm, um, you know, well, familiar with the property, I'll just put it that way. And um, one of the things is as, we, as you guys plan this out, if it, you know, if we, as we start to move through this process, you know, one of the things that I would really love to be able to see, and this isn't something, I'm just going to say this what it is, this isn't something that's any kind of a deal killer for me or whatever, but something that I'd be interested in, I would love to to try to, as the development goes, instead of going in there and just Chernobyl and the whole thing, you know, as far as just everything just straight down, if there's any of these trees that could be saved out there that might fit into that master plan, you know, those are big old beautiful awesome trees that uh, would be really nice if we could factor away on that property for some of those to be saved as we as you guys master plan it out i think that would be really nice it just make the 
it would bring that you know that whole area right there to make it look kind of more mature yes sir and green right away so anyway we'll, just we'll try to take advantage of those where we where we can we'll certainly investigate that i'm not trying to say hey you got to go do that i'm just kind of that would be really nice i believe so for especially for the city and especially closer out to to broad street yes sir can, can i just ask again about uh, the, the comments regarding the concerts uh that they're considering having uh, and you did say that those are you know fronted back towards northwest broad street yes ma'am they all be outdoor concerts or is there any of this indoor concerts in any of the indoor facilities there would be indoor and outdoor so there is a oh. mixture there yes ma'am based on okay Matt, i think they need to make sure that they keep that good looking barn that's on there too <laughs> <laughs> I think that Mike said he was going to use that as inspiration for uh, his GDO submittal. <laughs> <laughs> With no more humorous comments, I'd like to make a motion we approve subject to all staff comments. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you all for coming out tonight. It sounds like we may see you again. Um, there will be more public hearings as it goes on to the city council. Uh, but thank you as well to all the legacy sports team. <clears throat> Appreciate y'all being here. Next, we will move on to our staff reports and other business. Uh, we do have two items, one item on the agenda and another we're going to add on to that. Our first item, we'll wait for just a second on that as uh, give them a chance to... Okay, our first item is a mandatory referral for the abandonment of a sanitary sewer easement uh, located on property along East Northfield Boulevard and Pitts Lane, Huddleston Steel on behalf of Hassan Islami is the applicant and Ms. Smith. Good evening, commissioners. This evening's mandatory referral is for uh, the area shown on the aerial map. Uh, here in green, it's actually an existing 20-foot easement that was created uh, years ago prior to development being proposed for this location. At this time, the uh, staff is processing as well as site plan review for up to 36,000 square feet of um, both office and general commercial uses. The zone districts are actually um, OG and I believe CF. Uh, here it has gone to the Water Resources Board, uh, who on January 25th recommended the approval of the abandonment of this sewer easement as it's anticipated the new development will have a new sewer easement that is actually constructed and put in place in the back um, in this area just to the south <coughs> of that um, green shaded line in the back of the property. Uh, however, we would uh, ask that the Planning Commission uh, recommend approval to the City Council follow, subject to the following conditions. One, that the, necessary, the new sanitary sewer easement will be recorded prior to or simultaneous with the abandonment of the existing easement. Two, that the applicant must provide the City Legal Department all the necessary documentation, including legal descriptions and exhibits required to prepare <coughs> and record a legal instrument of abandonment which is subject to the city uh, legal department's final review, and third, that the applicant would be responsible for recording the legal instrument, including paying for any recreation fees. Um, and with that, this is not a required public hearing, so it is just a regular staff item. And if you have any questions on that, I'm more than happy to answer it. I do not see the applicant's engineer in the, off, in the uh, audience, so. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. All right. So any questions regarding this mandatory referral? And if none, we will need a 
Motion recommending our approval to the city council. So moved, subject to staff comments. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ms. Smith. And uh, next, we're going to bring our planning director, Mr. Greg Knight, up, and he is going to give us an update on the future land use map schedule and the uh, minor changes to our next meeting. Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Jones, uh, Planning Commission. We, last on January, on February the uh, on January the 19th, I presented a proposed schedule for the future land use map update. Um, and I stand before you tonight to uh, share a change to that date. We talked about the Planning Commission and City Council joint work session being scheduled for February the uh, 9th. Um, tonight, we'd, we would like to change that to February the 16th instead of the 9th. Uh, during that session, what we'd like to do is actually have our Planning Commission to follow at 1.30 uh, on the same date. Uh, so we would gavel in Council, we'd gavel in Planning Commission, and the first agenda item at 1.30 on our Planning Commission agenda would be the future land use map update. Uh, and then we would have our normal agenda, Planning Commission agenda to follow that. Uh, the 16th, um, and then uh, we'd, we'd have a normal public hearings or whatever we have scheduled to follow, immediately following that. So we are not, we would come to the meeting at, you know, 1.15-ish and we will, start our meeting at 1.30. We're not, we don't need to be in the, you're not gonna be talking about the future land use map during the city council session. That's just a city council It'll be at session. the end. We, right? we would like for you guys to actually get there at about one, um, and okay. so that we would actually at that point be able to have the joint session to talk about the actual future land use map. Okay, so one o'clock, we need to be there Yep. at 1.30. And then if we could um, probably need to vote on the rescheduling of that Planning Commission meeting and time. Second. So we're voting to change our meeting to February 16th at 1 o'clock at the Murfreesboro Airport. Airport, yes. Um, and we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. McKnight. And do we have any other staff reports or other business tonight? No, ma'am. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Then we stand adjourned. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs>